Good morning. This is Bill from Auto Europa Naples on what I consider to be kind of a lovely Naples, Florida Monday. There's sort of a pissy little rain in the air. The weather is nice and cool. I've got a jacket on and uh, everybody's real excited. Uh, you know, again, nice to get a little taste of winter weather of sorts. This is the season weather that we've been waiting for. I suppose the people who come down here aren't thrilled about the little rainy stuff, but otherwise this is just absolutely lovely and I'm happy to be alive, which is of course a distinct difference from most other days. There's somebody going nuts out on the highway. Uh, anyway, what I have today is this 2013 Mercedes-Benz GLK 350. Uh, the GLK is an acronym for Galanden Wagon Luxus Compact Class. I'm not even going to try to butcher that with the German accent. But essentially what it means is small luxury SUV. And that is, of course, precisely what it is. Now, this is the kind of car that normally I would be designed to hate. It's just something that I don't like. It's... You know, taking a C-Class pa uh, platform, this you know, the W204 is the C-Class, this is the X204, so it's essentially taking that platform, and then we've got phone calls coming in, I'll get them later, uh, and it's turned it into sort of a heightened, compact SUV for what would have been yuppies in the 80s. I'm not sure who, maybe young urban profile, I don't know who's driving them now, but basically the same kind of thing. And uh, to me, it's just been, you know, fakery and trickery. I mean, it's not really an off-road thing. It's just sort of, it's a car for people who like SUVs. But I have to say that the styling of this vehicle, from its from its introduction in 2010, almost immediately won me over. I just think it's a great looking piece. And, uh, you know, the fact that they did a nice job turning it into an SUV, that platform, has a nice ride height, has a nice feel going down the road. Mercedes really overachieved on this one. Uh, you know, I have to put it in the column of cars or vehicles that I like, which, uh, frankly, against my will, uh, which really says something about how they are. Uh, this one, again, a third it has pretty low miles. It's finished in Mars red. Really pretty color on this car. We call it resale red. Look at this. We've got a... I think that's one of those pressurized Cessnas. I can't remember the, um, the model number, but it's got... Uh, it's got floats on it, so they're heading out to the water somewhere. I could really use a little bit of mufflers, maybe become Midasized, but anyway, it'll drone on in a minute. Uh, anyway, it, you know, from the, the first introduction of the GLK, I always found it to be a very attractive looking vehicle. They took the uh, Glandon wagon, that famous Mercedes Wolf, the um, military vehicle that, of course, the Kardashians all drive now, and uh, they took some of the styling from that and they put it into this. At a time when virtually everything else was curved and rounded and soft edge, this thing was much harder, almost Cadillac style with that stupid art and science thing uh, with all the uh, lines and, you know, look, look at the wheel wells on it. They're, they're not round, they're shaped with straight lines, the big straight line going down the body line on the side. It just is a nice angular piece. And then in 2013, they did what was called a refresh. So it got much more attractive, sort of modern looking front headlights. It got a good looking, uh, this one has the appearance package. So you get that big chrome there. And uh, uh, there goes Dalton. Thank God the orange shorts are off the menu today. God, I see those way too often. Uh, anyway, it's got an appearance package, so you can see the chrome bumpers, and yeah, it's just, you know, the 20-inch wheels, the AMG stuff, the running boards, uh, really becomes kind of a nice-looking piece. I think in 2014, it all came together, both inside and out. Sorry, 2013. Uh, you know, the rear door handle higher than the front. It's got a nice sort of raked look. Little spoiler back over the top of the rear windshield. It's got nickel-looking uh, cargo rails up on the top, although with the pano roof, I don't know what you're strapping down up there. It'll just be kind of weird. Uh, but uh, anyway, it just looks nice. Also a diffuser at the bottom in chrome with cool little rectangular looking twice pipes. You've got a uh, chrome, you know, cargo scuff plate on top of the bumper, uh, you know, rear wiper. Yeah, you know, it just looks nice and I think that's pretty cool. So uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into a big lengthy overview of this thing. There really just isn't that much to talk about other than looking at and driving it. So let's get right into it. 
So now the minute that you started adding options on these things, they became expensive. The base price was, you know, probably under 40 in the 39 range, very comparable to the BMW X3, maybe even a little bit cheaper. Uh, but the minute you started tacking stuff on, they got pretty expensive. And this one would have been up near the $50,000 mark, which gets to be pricey for a compact SUV. Uh, you can see it's got a Mercedes-Benz accessory little thing here, the rubber mat. So that's nice if all your crap leaks out or you're carrying bags of cement you're not going to incur onto your carpet. I do like how it has the light gray seats with all the black stuff surrounding. That just makes it, yeah, it stays cleaner, you know, than it would uh, with an all gray interior. That just doesn't wear well in a car that gets used for cargo. Got a little first aid kit over here, a little morphine surrettes and tourniquets and, you know, whatever a wounded German might need. You've got a uh, outlet here, 112 volt, nice. What is that? 115, sorry. So you can run your uh, hair dryer or <clears throat> you know any sort of uh, home accessory you might want sure maybe a blender would be a nice thing to tailgate with uh, then you also get a, a 12 volt outlet over there uh, under this guy is of course the carpet and under that is the uh, spare tire which is a uh, donut and uh, still has the front license plate with it if you need to use that so pretty good storage back here I want to say 53 cubic feet, so more than the C in the trunk, which it better be. Uh, you fold those seats down, you double that, and uh, you start to be able to fit some stuff in there. You could actually go to Costco and bring home the paper towels in this one, and uh, that's good stuff. Uh, to lower the trunk, you just press this guy, and it will come down in a power fashion. Have a look under the hood. Mercedes really hides those releases way under the dashboard. See a little spot to water on it today. It's that pissy rain. So this was a big upgrade for 2013. Uh, it's essentially that same 3.5 liter V6 they've been using for years, but they added some stuff to make it better. Uh, one of them being direct injection. Uh, what that does is sort of does away with the um, uh, the whole intake runner thing, or you know, it makes it just go directly into the cylinders in a very controlled sense. It can make the engine sound ticky a little bit, but you can't argue with the fuel mileage and the um, and the power. So it's up from 268 to 302. Big difference. It now has as much horsepower as the V8s did back in the uh, the mid-2000s, the Mercedes V8s. Uh, and uh, the fuel mileage went up at the same time. So no complaints there. Decent tow capacity because of that, like 3,500 pounds or so. So a little boat or something, you'd be able to stuff behind this uh, without too many problems. Uh, that's made it to Mercedes-Benz. Really, truly fantastic seven-speed automatic gearbox very nice unit and uh, works extremely well uh, these could come in all-wheel drive or two-wheel drive I believe this one is uh, two-wheel rear-wheel drive uh, which is of course fine for down here but uh, yeah up north if you need more traction you probably want to get the all-wheel drive version uh, that said down here yeah you don't need it at all it's perfect the way it is uh, you can see everything nice and clean under there very proper and uh, lovely all around now you see this is unusual this is the first GL that I've seen with Distronic Cruise Control, which is a pretty expensive option. Uh, you see how this star is basically flat and plasticky all the way around. It's not a true uh, air vent like the other stars are. That's because this is a big radar unit. It's like the deflector dish on the Starship Enterprise. And uh, what that does is scan the road ahead uh, for... Um, uh, cars, you know, on the highway. It'll keep your distance, so you set that nicely. Uh, you know, say you want to get, you know, 100 foot difference between you and the car in front. The car will come, this thing will come to a complete stop if the car in front of you stops and then start up again. So it will always maintain that distance. Very nice system in this car. And uh, of course, that also works with the advanced safety features, your pre safe, your extra brake assist. Uh, you know, if it thinks you're about to plow into something, it's going to wait till the last minute and then apply full brakes to make the accident less severe. So a tremendous amount of safety stuff is uh, engineered into this car and it's part of what drives the cost up. Uh, in this year you also get these kind of swoopy looking LED things, the daytime running lights, they look nice and aggressive and angry. You get more LEDs down there and uh, of course again that big lovely chrome uh, push bar looking thing on the front which it, obviously it's not, I just sort of give the illusion of one but it looks neat. And uh, then again, those 20-inch uh, AMG 
uh, twin spoke, uh, sorry, yeah, twin spoke five stars. They just look terrific, as does the running boards. And I do love the pickle forks and the side view mirrors. So very, very cool stuff and uh, beautiful styling in this car. You can also see as part of that uh, pre-safe and Distronic, it's got a camera shooting out in front of the center view mirror. That's what that little trapezoidal thing is there. And uh, that's uh, taking scan of what's going on around it. Uh, you also get a panoramic sunroof in this one. Nice big huge uh, sunroof, basically the whole top of the car so the front and rear passengers have something to look at. Okay, rear, you got room for three, although they're not gonna be super chipper because you do have that big transmission hump there. Uh, but uh, you know, you can fit them in. Two passengers, yeah, they'll be fine. Your Canadians will be okay. Uh, you got decent headroom, real good headroom actually, much better than legroom. Uh, you got little pockets there, places to put some, uh, you know, revolvers or pistols. You got a center console here with cup holders, another nice spot for a small nine millimeter. So gun storage, not really an issue in the GLK. You're going to be able to fit all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, you also get pretty decent uh, appointments. You get the sort of burl wood. Uh, with the nice, you know, it's, it doesn't look like the world's most expensive door panel, but you can tell it's nice, tight, well-engineered. Uh, I like the nickel finish on the uh, on the armrest there, a little place to put more stuff. I don't think you fit a hand grenade in there, but probably some extra clips for the gun or magazines, and everyone's going to be pretty chipper with that. Uh, also has the all-weather floor mats, this one. Uh, this does have keyless go, so I've got my keys here in my pocket. If I press this, it's going to lock the car uh, to open it. I just put my hand on it, and uh, it will pop open. Uh, inside, very nice, comfortable seats, lovely to sit on. You've got all your lumbar stuff here. Uh, very, very smooth and nice to ride in. Uh, they are, of course, uh, power with uh, memory on this side, part of that updated package it has. It's got a little bit of a Luxo package, this one. You've got all your uh, mirrors and windows here, your lock and unlock, and uh, a trunk release down there, speakers in the door. Uh, you know, all very lovely. I also like the treatment there with the chrome and the black. Yeah, it just looks nice. Right, let's fire this thing up. So do that foot on the brake. Uh, foot on the brake. We're gonna tap that start stop, and <laughs> everything comes to life. <clears throat> of course, it does beep at me incessantly because I'm not wearing my seatbelt. Need to start putting that on first. Oh, Amy, what you gonna do? Uh, anyway. Um, so what do we got? We have a very nice little instrument cluster here with the digital information part in the center. Uh, you can see we're in eco mode. That's over, where the hell is that, here? That means it has that dumb start-stop feature that I don't like. It'll shut itself off at uh, traffic lights to save fuel. I like to turn that off instantly, but uh, some people do like it for the fuel savings. Uh, it also, of course, has a uh, sport setting, which does away with that altogether. Now, here's my favorite update mod refresh for this year and these are these incredibly cool air conditioning vents that harken absolutely back to uh, the W123 and other earlier Benzes. Uh, they have always, they just remind me of something you'd have found in a Boeing uh, in the 70s. They are awesome and I love them. They're easy to move around, to shut off, to turn on. And uh, you know, if Mercedes was gonna go retro, I'm really glad they chose the AC vents to do it with. That's just cool. Uh, down here, you got your automatic headlights. Uh, you've got your, um, whatever the hell this is, you've got your, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, rear wiper control front and rear. Uh, there's your cruise down here in a place that doesn't get confusing with the wiper, which is nice, or the turn signal. Uh, being the premium package, you get a power tilt and telescoping co uh, steering column. You've got multifunction stuff here with voice control, voice command, uh, all very nice. Uh, they moved the shifter from here up to here, which was a good idea in terms of giving you more room. Now you have the world's biggest ashtray, which probably isn't an ashtray. Yeah, that is an ashtray. That's funny. Yeah, they don't really do that anymore. Nobody smoked in this thing. But what's all this? I mean, I guess you could put stuff in there, but it doesn't look conveniently sized for really anything. Uh, but you do get a nice wooden roller on it, so I guess there's something to be said for that. 
and hit back and go over here. So here's Mercedes-Benz command unit, cockpit management and data system. Uh, pretty nice for 2013. It gives you uh, your navigation. Uh, which has a 3D or two-dimensional map. It'll even, like if it's foggy or windy or sunny, it'll do all that. Uh, when I was taking pictures earlier, I'm going to fix this. I went into um, make it night mode because the camera wasn't doing a very good job at distinguishing between uh, the screen. Let's see, we're going to automatic, and that should bring us to day mode here, let's see. Yeah, now we're back in day mode. You can see it's even sort of a hazy day, so they give you a little bit of haze over the map to let you know it's just that accurate. It kind of shows you the weather, which I think is cool. And of course, you can zoom in, zoom out. You can get the entire state of Florida on here if we want. Lovely. And a very nice nav unit in this thing. You also, of course, get your um, in-dash CD changer. If we put one in there, you've got your Bluetooth audio. Lovely. Uh, you've got your uh, Bluetooth phone, which is fantastic. Put it in reverse. You get a nice camera with the uh, guidelines. Works pretty well. No complaints there. Uh, again, you can see with the Distronic cruise control over there, you see the two cars kind of getting ready to smash into each other with the exclamation point between them. Uh, that actually signifies pre-safe, not necessarily Distronic cruise. Uh, underneath it, you can see the uh, car with the two, it looks like skis on either side of it, and that is the uh, lane assist that's going to make sure you're in your lane. Uh, the coffee cup is the uh, Another safety feature that scans the way you're driving and makes sure that everything's cool. And if it looks a little bit weird, then it's going to warn you to stop and get some coffee. They should really call that Coffee Tronic. Uh, it also has blind spots. So if you look over there, you can see the little yellow triangle uh, in the uh, mirror. That's just a caution because we're getting going. Uh, that'll go off as we're driving along and then turn red when someone's in our blind spot. So nice the way that all works. Uh, you can also scroll through and get different displays out of your out of your little center thing there's your distance display blind spot pre-safe you know all uh, tension assist lane keep assist all the stuff that sort of keeps you going no messages settings so on and so forth all lovely uh, I'm not sure if this has active parking assist or not. I don't think so because I don't see Parktronic, which I believe that's a part of it. So anyway, you can't have it all. There's great vents again, a little indicator for the passenger airbag. This gives you the direct access stuff to the radio, the command unit. Uh, here you've got uh, economy and sport setting, your eco setting that shuts off the car. You've got a nice dual side climate control here. Uh, works great and uh, no issues at all, lovely. Over here you've got a glove box, which I would expect you to have. All very fantastic set of books, and of course we've got uh, two keys in this thing, so uh, works uh, works very well. Uh, up top you've got this uh, big pano sunroof. It's uh, dripping, so I'm not gonna open it so the rain comes in, but you get the point. It's got nice big sky, uh, glass sky for you and the rear passengers. Let's go for a spin. Uh, in 13, they also got this sort of electro-mechanical steering with variable assist. Did away with the hydraulic unit, which, you know, they've gotten better at. In the earlier versions of that, it really did away with road feel and took some of the joy out of driving. Uh, by the time this system came out, they've made it a lot better. So you get a nice feedback from the steering wheel. You get a real nice seating position, terrific visibility all around. I really, God, I gotta tell you, I, this isn't a car that I would generally like, but I do like this one. Now, again, with 302 horsepower and pretty decent fuel mileage, I might add, um, it's pretty fun to drive. It's very, very peppy, uh, particularly without all-wheel drive taking it down. So let's see if one of these guys is, uh, what a nice guy, finally, a big diesel truck driver who doesn't feel bad about letting someone in. That is unusual. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, you got plenty of horsepower on tap. You've got a lovely feel from the steering. You got good feel from the brakes, despite it all being, you know, computer controlled. Uh, you felt that little lurch there when I gave it gas. Unlike a lot of Benzes, this thing leaves in first gear and feels great doing it. Like, let's put it in sports setting. There we go. We got a red ass up there now. 
don't have too much heat built up, so I'm not going to hammer. Eh, we do, actually. We're not doing bad. But like I said, you got a real nice sound out of the pipes. You get instant throttle response. Uh, you're not going to feel like you're wanting for pep or power in this thing. You can see our green... Uh, Lane assist is lighting up to uh, let us know that we're not idiots yet, but it's keeping an eye on us. And uh, it just becomes a really nice cruiser for around town or on the highway. So, uh, you know, there it is. I'm not going to lie. I actually like this GLK. Uh, you know, in a class of compact SUVs that normally I just scoff at. I just think they're silly, you know. But uh, this one, again, two-wheel drive, so it's not pretending to be some great off-road piece. Uh, it's just basically a C-Class uh, with a little bit more cargo room for people who want it. And, uh, of course, also people who like SUV style instead of sedan style, but I'll just pretend <laughs> they're not the ones looking at it. Oh, God. Anyway. So there it is. This is a 2013 Mercedes-Benz GLK 350. Uh, this one has 47,000 miles. Very, very nice options. You really don't find these things with that whole uh, Distronic setup really uh, very often. Uh, the Pano, the appearance package, the AMG Sport wheels, and oh, good lord. You get a great turning radius. Nice. Nice sound. The sport setting really lengthens the shifts and gives it a different throttle response, so you're going to like having that on. Uh, anyway, there it is. If you have an interest in this thing, give us a call, 239-298-8000. Marty is standing by, or uh, you can see it on the web at aenaples.com. Thank you so much for having a look. We really appreciate it, and we will see you with the next one. Take care.